All right, I don't want to go through the whole mechanism here or right. pick the products. I just want to say what the mechanism will be. Okay. So you tell me what's going to, what's the mechanism going to be here? It's going to be an E2. Good. And how do we know? Because of, um, it's on the it's on um, a primary the alpha carbon right. is primary and it's a multi base strong right. multi base. mechanism be here? <clears throat> what type of reaction would happen here? In SN2? That's right. That's the right answer. Why would this be SN2? Because, um, well, it's a, it's a, the alpha carbon is primary, and uh, the O, uh, in this case, makes, the uh, negative oxygen makes a good nucleophile. Yeah, good. Oh, well, which column are we in? And then we have the kind of leading group, too. Right. right so which column would that put us in? The, uh, the non bases. Good. So that, again, the key thing is negative oxygens have two separate columns right. based on whether they're bulky, part of a bulky molecule, or non-bulky. Well, this is definitely not bulky. This is as little bulk as you could get over here. All right, so this is definitely going to be an SN2 reaction. Um, over here. You did a couple things here real well. One thing you did is you, that you saw the charges. A lot of people wouldn't realize that there's charges here, but as we've discussed, if you're bonded to a sodium, you really have an ionic bond. So it's good that you put in the charges. So here we have an O minus. Um, and it's not bulky, so this would be SN2. So I wanted to point out the big difference between O minus in a bulky base and O minus in something that's not bulky, which would act like a nucleophile. So this would be SN2 and this would be E2 over here. All right, so that was uh, a good uh, analysis of that. This is primary with not too much steric hindrance on the beta carbon, so we're just in the normal primary row. Let's just predict what type of reaction would happen here. That's right. How do we know that? Because we have a first degree uh, alpha carbon, and then we have a poor nucleophile. That's right. Who's the nucleophilic atom? The neutral oxygen. Yeah, neutral oxygen. There's a huge difference. Now we're starting to see why I keep harping on how the charges are the most important part. It's really easy to ignore these charges, but they're the most important part. Uh, without the, uh, there's a big difference between a neutral oxygen and a negative oxygen over here. Um, why doesn't this have a charge? Because it's not, it does, it's not ionically bonded to anything, right? It's just bonded to hydrogens in covalent bonds. There's a big difference between an oxygen that's bonded to only hydrogens and an oxygen with a, with a sodium over here. Uh, okay, so this is not ionic bonds. This is a neutral oxygen, a, a poor nucleophile. Uh, it can only do SN1, but we can't do an SN1 in the primary. So this would be no reaction. reaction would happen here. Um, you get uh, SN1. Right. A little bit of E1. That's right. So this would be our SN1 slash E1, which means about 95% SN1 and 5% E1. Because the SN1 uh, doesn't care about the strength of the nucleophile. It's going to, right. once it becomes a carbocation, it's going to pick up whatever's around. Yeah, exactly. And now we have a secondary alpha carbon, which is good enough to form the carbocation, which we couldn't do over here. OK, so it's important to have all these different examples in your notes and compare them. You can see that oxygen, uh, there's a lot of subtleties there. The oxygen can do many different things, depending on the exact conditions. Uh, see, another subtlety, suppose we didn't use sodium hydroxide here, suppose we used uh, sodium methoxide. Let's talk that through. 
So this would be sodium methoxide. I, instead of having a hydrogen here, I put a methyl group. Well, um, this would still have a negative charge, right? So the big issue is, should we consider this a bulky base or not? Uh, well, as a rule of thumb, probably just about the only bulky bases you will see are LDA and chert butyl oxide. Uh, you can see, people are not sure about this. Obviously, this is bulkier than here, but it's not nearly as bulky as this. Okay, so this would probably still be considered a non-bulky base. So sometimes, I wanted to review that because sometimes people aren't clear how much bulk is bulky enough. Well, you need to have about as much bulk as LDA or chert butyl oxide to really be a bulky. Just one methyl group or even two might not really cut it. On the other hand, um, so we'd probably still predict SN2 as the major product here. However, if you look below the chart, notice that the chart um, admits, uh, in some cases, we're going to get a mix of reactions. <clears throat> probably, if we use this, this base over here, probably this has enough bulk that we'll probably get a mix of SN2 and E2. I think E2 would still be the major reaction here, but there might be significant amounts of E2 as well. So all the table is trying to do is tell you the major product. Sometimes there are some minor competing reactions there. And the bulkier this becomes, the more E2 we're going to get and the less SN2. I think that at this point it would still be mainly SN2. Uh, but certainly if we got all the way to this bulk, now it would be mainly E2. Okay. As a rule of thumb though, if you're not sure whether something is bulky or not, unless it's tert butyl oxide or LDA, maybe it's not really bulky enough to, to qualify. Those but are the big bulky bases. Even with a, a tert butyl oxide, if you have a methyl carbon, then it'll only, it'll, it's going to do SN2. That's the only time that it'll go SN2. Yeah, okay. and the, the reason is, that there's a reason for that, though. Um, remember, what does an elimination reaction do? It makes a pi bond. Between the alpha and the beta carbon. Correct. But a methyl doesn't have a beta carbon. Nothing to make a pi bond. This would, yeah, so even here, terpene oxide would prefer E2, but it's just impossible. You can't do an E2. So a methyl alpha carbon just means a one carbon chain. Well, so this is, uh, uh, when we think about it, we see this has to be, it can't be an elimination because there aren't enough carbons. Okay. All right, that's why we need a separate row for methyl, because there's some things they can't do. They can't do eliminations at all. If you look at the methyl <laughs> row, there's no eliminations in the methyl row. Okay, that's a little bit of a technicality. All right, so uh, that gives us these important uh, ideas over here. So we have to focus on whether the oxygen is charged or neutral, and whether it's part of a bulky base or a non-bulky base. And terpene oxide is the key bulky base for oxygen. Okay. So, like I said, those uh, five or six examples I just have on the board would be good to have in a safe place in your notes.